The Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, says the national payment system. Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to the News Bulletin at 8, brought to you by number one news provider, Eswatini TV. I am Nandu Misa Vilagata, alongside Namakabi Songkambule, and here are your top stories. The Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, says the National Payment System Bill of 2022 will provide for the regulation and supervision of the country's payment systems. His Majesty King Swatli III has graciously granted permission for the Parliament of Eswatini to host the 10th retreat of the Association of Senates, Shura and Equivalent Councils of Africa and the Arab World. The National Maze Corporation Chief Executive Officer Mavila Vilani says most problems that were faced by the corporation were caused by cash flow management. The news in detail. The Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, has presented before the Senate Finance Portfolio Committee the reinsurance bill of 2022. The committee also had a consultation meeting with the stakeholders on the bill. The Minister of Finance Senate Portfolio Committee, led by Senator Tony Manze, as the chairperson has hosted a stakeholder consultation meeting on the reinsurance bill. The Minister of Finance, Nguyen Rickenback, delivered his preamble before the committee, highlighting the objectives of the bill. Therefore, the objectives of the reinsurance bill are to, firstly, introduce the reinsurance industry into the country, secondly, regulate the reinsurance industry in the country, and thirdly, make it mandatory for any person wishing to take reinsurance cover to take it with local reinsurance companies or provide for proportional reinsurance um, where, at, uh, where at least a certain percentage of the cover is to be taken locally. This will impact the assets invested in the country as currently insurance industries subscribe to foreign reinsurance companies. As a stakeholder, Lidwala Insurance Company tabled their submissions before the committee. Guma interpretations kuya show go to the Akonema reinsurance brokers, but le act ago even the Lenga Gutsi atau license a ganjani, a seven de ganjan, Moba even the insurance act le le ya 2005 na kona kwa atwe awe atwe ma reinsurance brokers the committee then deliberated the bill close by close reporting for Eswatini TV news i'm samgal siwe cause awards kombozo tlamini parliament and again, the Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, says the National Payment System Bill of 2022 will provide for the regulation and supervision of the country's payment systems. The Minister was speaking in Parliament during a stakeholder engagement meeting hosted by the Senate Portfolio Committee. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, the objectives of the National Payment Systems Bill are to review and repeal the National Clearance Settlement Systems Act of 2011. And it also is developed to encourage and develop a safe and efficient mechanisms for the exchange of money between transacting parties. It's also to enable circulation and use of money, in other words, broadly all payment instruments. It's also to ensure finality and irrevocability of settlements. And it's also to ensure identification, control, minimization, and management of payments relating to risks. Mr. Chairman, some of the specific reviews leading to the repeal of the National Clearance Settlement Systems Act include, so in other words, the reason why we're having to do this is the bill is primarily, primarily a response to increasing innovation, the emergence of new payment methods, technologies, services, and risks, as well as policy developments relating to access to payment systems by non-banks, consumer protection, and financial stability. It's also a response to SADC harmonization initiatives, which have resulted in the adoption of a SADC model payment law, and the proposed bill seeks to incorporate the principles and standards agreed to in the SADC model payment law. As well as cu currently, we have the National Payment Clearance Settlements Bill, is mainly for the clearance of settlements. The bill seeks to accommodate an emerging new range of services, service providers such as non-bank financial institutions, mobile money operators, and fintech startups, and further seeks to align the payment system space with existing or proposed legislation 
such as the Financial um, Institutions Bill of 2021 and Securities Act of 2010 and the Anti-Money Laundering and Combating of, of Financing of Terrorism Act. It's also trying to regulate, supervise and oversee the national payment systems as a whole with the aim of ensuring... The Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Princess Milani, has appointed returning officers for this year's local government elections. The minister said the elections are to be held before the 24th of June this year. During a press meeting held on Monday, the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Prince Milane, announced the appointment of returning officers for this year's local government elections. The minister said the elections are expected to be held before June 24 this year and that the official voters' role for this year's local government elections is expected to be published before May 10. <laughs> Lumsebendi, Wexola, Malol Palis or Gutsi, Ube Wendegi, Sipins the Sea Shogutsi, Msaga ten May, Kupege Gutsi, Lusa, Lulung Lona Lona, Lugel Sengetelua, Etigual, Lubesel Memo Mumo, Nago Begnene, E Lentunago. The minister also encouraged Maswati to visit local authorities to verify the compiled voters' role. Reporting for a Swatini TV News, I'm Sam Galsu, because I work to compose Lamini Matapa. High Court Judge Sabelo Masu has reserved judgment in the bail hearing of murder accused unionist and football administrator Mashumi Shongwe. Shongwe is accused of having a hand in the murder of his wife, Digezile Shongwe. High Court Judge Sabelo Masu said he will take time to look into the arguments of both the Crown and the accused person. During the arguments, the Crown pleaded with the court not to grant the accused person Mashum Shonge bail. The Crown informed the court that Shonge is a fate risk as he has a relative in South Africa. It was the Crown's submission that Shonge's relative, who is in South Africa, is the one who contracted the hitman on behalf of the accused person. The Crown said once given bail, Shonge may evade trial. As his charge is serious, the Crown said it was positive that Shonge will be convicted. On the other hand, Shonge submitted that he was not a flight risk. He added that the Crown has failed to demonstrate that he was linked to the killers of his wife. He further informed the court that there is also no evidence suggesting that he will evade trial if granted bail. The accused person also mentioned that there is no evidence to the extent that his release from custody will cause public outcry. He further submitted that there is no evidence that he tried five times to kill his wife. The Crown is represented by Sandile Mjul, while Sandile Lamine appears for Shongwe. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune, Langa Manda, High Court. His Majesty King Swatini III has graciously granted permission for the Parliament of Swatini to host the 10th retreat of the Association of Synods, Shura and Equivalent Councils of Africa and the Arab World, ASECA. When making the announcement, Senate President Lindiwe Lamini said the success of the 10th ASECA retreat will have a lasting solution and positive impact on Swatini and promote collaboration among African and Arab countries to address global challenges and strengthen economic cooperation. The President said the retreat will take place on the 11th to the 14th of May 2023. The retreat we'll be looking at is developing these strategies and also strengthening parliamentarians' capacities to address these challenges uh, during crisis. Um, and how does it actually work out? There are always two topics that are given uh, for the retreat. Um, in this instance, we will have one topic that says the impact of international crisis on economies. So we will be looking at what is going on uh, in the economies of the world. Theme. The second theme is the significance of the green economy in achieving sustainable development in Africa and the Arab world. 
uh, in alignment with the, with the goals of, and objectives of ASECA, the retreat will discuss interventions on how to encourage debate, uh, how we can encourage debate and Afro-Arab dialogue on strategic and priority issues in the African and Arab regions, highlighting the repercussions of ongoing uh, challenges. The benefits of such a, a, a retreat uh, are, are, are really great to the economy. There'll be a s economic stimulation. There will be a lot of activity where even that one selling uh, their goods from the market will benefit from uh, such an influx of visitors. The National Mayor's Corporation Chief Executive Officer Mavela Villani says most problems that were faced by the corporation were caused by cash flow management. Villani said this in an interview with Eswat in the TV as he has been in the office for more than 100 days, so he shared his achievements. The National Mayor's Corporation Chief Executive Officer Mavela Villani elaborated on some of the corporation's achievements since he took the reins at NMC. As a minimum, we have made a commitment to millers to say each miller will get as a minimum two truck loads a day. And some of them require two truck loads a day, some of them require more than that. Those that will require more than the two truck loads, we then give them import permits uh, 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 according to predetermined uh, you know, conditions. And we found NMC relying heavily on two suppliers, uh, uh, basically in South Africa, and uh, that was not a good space, so we've increased our supplier base now to five. Uh, so that we ensure that we have a, a, a sustained supply of maize uh, throughout uh, the year. And we are still striving for more improvement in terms of particularly our uh, management of our, our finance uh, stability as well as um, innovative ways of achieving what we want to do as an organization. Villane says the tractor hire program has been strengthened as owners will be paid within 14 days after rendering services. He adds that NMC has signed memorandum of understanding with Isuate and the Youth Revolving Fund. Villane says this will assist farmers and the youth with seed capitals. For Eswati in TV News, Fortune, Langa Mandla, with Sikumbu Uzo, Lamin Matapa. She said only one resident have urged the Elections and Boundaries Commission to ensure that voters reside where they vote and are known. They say a proof must be shown to avoid voters being bought. The Civic and Voter Education was at Chiselun 1 over the weekend. The Civic and Voter Education was at Chiselun 1 this past weekend where residents were educated on the voting process and everything to do with the upcoming elections. After the voter education, residents posed questions to the commission. Among some questions, they wanted the commission to ensure that people who will work during the elections are unemployed people to avoid some working on the elections, yet they are employed elsewhere, yet there is the high number of unemployment in the country. Mbuza nye wokala wokuti. Laba laba sema chele. Baya vota. Ba vota ganchani. Ba sema chele. Mwapi ya nati sinabu jela. Laba tele. Kuna lele tifa wa shinti ngos. Kutu uma ba vota. Ba mvote la inu mtu sala. Numa ba vote la vuna laba lima chele. Mbese kwa ba njani. Kula ma officers. Sesige siyege. Gukasha. Sebenda Kitchen Monitor 
Some wanted the Elections Commission to ensure that voters reside where they vote and be non-residents in those areas. The Civic and Voter Education continues in various communities to ensure that everyone is clear on the upcoming elections and their roles. Reporting IMK and MCB visuals provided by the Elections and Boundaries Commission. Pudla residents have applauded government for prioritizing their health by bringing free health services to their place. Kapudla residents came in their numbers to get health services on Monday. The free health services provided to Kapudla residents is courtesy of the Rotary Club. They have brought all kind of medical assistance and all specialists along with them, including doctors, to give health services to the people. These include eye specialists, physiotherapy specialists, diabetes and breast cancer members were also present to provide services as well. Kapudla residents said they are grateful for the free medical assistance. They say this has saved them money to go to hospital and indeed they needed such, especially the elderly. Dr. Musam Tetwa, a medical doctor, says they brought with them all specialists to meet the people's needs. Apart from that, also diabetes society, they will be at Kapudla Clinic until Thursday this week. Reporting IMK and MCB, Kapudla. The president of the League of African Churches, Bishop Samson Tlatuago, has warned against the use of foreign substances in churches as that may endanger people. This follows reports of a certain Jericho church at Manyeveni area where a member who is reported to have been in high spirits sprinkled others with petrol. A kindly then started fire resulting in serious injuries to many. Following a report from one of the media houses in the country who reported that Jericho members from a Manyeveni area were rushed to hospital this past Sunday after one member who is said to have been high in spirit poured petrol on the members during a service yesterday. This happened while there was a kangle which then caught fire on the members who have already had petrol on their clothes. The League of Churches President Bishop Samson Tlachago wished speed recovery to all involved. He further warns against the use of foreign substances in churches as that could pose danger. <laughs> He says people must always be in their full senses in church and be able to discern spirits and avoid things that could pose danger to their lives. Reporting IMK and MCB, Ngwane Park. Dear viewers, now take a look at our financial updates. Welcome back. You're still watching Eswatini TV and for sports news tonight. Eswatini Rugby Union hosted their first rugby festival in over three years, where eight teams from both male and female took part of the tournament. Pumlani Gumete, who is the public relations officer of the union, says due to COVID-19, they could not host the game. So now they believe the standard will begin to pick up.
We begin our sports roundup with Rapi, where the Eswatini Rapi Union hosted their first festival after a long time due to the coronavirus pandemic in the recent years. The festival where both females and male teams took part, and the female teams were four as well as the male teams. It had the corner and leaks at the Lumja to the Taras, Moba Uma Uba, the left and Yalum Jalugam Fanalaman, or figure Utsibus, seven and Minya Dalimin and I gave them. But the little Mia Lopegi, the Lugosu would say, E Union, E seven dealer. Sinega gets at his hail at Dandy, Satu Bongel, get her young bonga in seventy eight. And moving on, football, there will be a new crown king in the M10 Premier League, as the defending champions cannot defend the title mathematically with only three games left. Green Mamba still lead the race with 55 points after their 3-1 victory against Monen Pirates. Their remaining three games are against Young Buffaloes, Royal Leopard and Denver Sundowns. Second on the log is Young Buffaloes, who played one old draw against Royal Leopard on Sunday at Nklume Stadium, and now 51 points, and they are left with Green Mamba, Tabangulu Kelly, and Denver Sundowns. Solos, who are left with Denver Sundowns, Royal Leopard and Manzini Sipets. The relegation battle continues as the bottom of the table, seven dreams with 10 points, as they were heavily defeated by Manzini Sipets by eight goals to zero. Tabangulu Kelly shared a point with Madlenya after their one all draw. Tambuti lost against Denver Sundowns with three goals to zero. Manzin Wanderers continued to avoid relegation after their 2 1 victory against Singh's in North Space. Reporting for a TV Sports, I'm Linda Jamini. Mbabani. That is all we had for tonight, but before we wrap up, we'll take a quick recap of today's headlines. The Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, says the National Payment System Bill of 2022 will provide for the regulation and supervision of the country's payment systems. His Majesty King Swatli III has graciously granted permission for the Parliament of Eswatini to host the 10th retreat of the Association of Senates, Shura and Equivalent Councils of Africa and the Arab World. The National Maize Corporation Chief Executive Officer Mavila Vilani says most problems that were faced by the corporation were caused by cash flow management. That brings us to the end of our news bulletin tonight. Up next is the weather forecast for selected towns. Good night, Aswatini. Basically, the way the gospel has been portrayed, my little lag bad, offended. Call of